4.5 kilograms. She has an excellent record of 20 wins, 3 defeats, 12 of those wins coming by way of knockouts. The former IBF Intercontinental Champion from Stuttgart, Germany, Timo Schwarzkopf! And his opponent finding the blue corner, wearing the black shorts with the red trim, a weight in at 64, 64 kilograms. He is undefeated with a record of 24 wins, no losses, 13 of those wins coming by way of knockout. The former British Super Lightweight Champion and the WBO Intercontinental Champion from Chorley, England, Hell Cato, Jack Catterall! You have 10 out of 5, no foul, clear fight. All right, good luck. Short and sweet from referee Yuji Fukuchi there. Ten round schedule, Jack Catterall, 24 fights undefeated. He's already spoken about the ideal situation where it all pans out and we get Taylor v. Catterall for all four belts in December 2020. And that is yeah. some prediction for 12 months' time, but that, that's a mark of the confidence of the man. Well, it is, you know, you want to get a shot first, but you know, you can't think your dream, you don't want to wait until you get twice. One of Ramirez gets his get the Crescent Apostle fight on the way, I think it's February the 1st. And then what if he gets Josh Taylor, and Josh Taylor wins, and he fights Josh Taylor in an all British world title fight for everything. <laughs> or, he, or he beats or he beats Ramirez, which is a hard ask, but then he gets to fight Josh Taylor for, for everything. It's a, you know, it's a really tough division, full of, full of real quality fighters. But someone on the line, he will get his shot. That's, that's, that's the positive thing he has to stick to. And well, these sort of fights, a, a, a banana skin that he has to be, treat this as a world title fight because any step up and he'll go from number one to number 11. Now oh, Schwarzkopf, as we said before, 28 years of age, he'll be pretty confident that he could still get to that world level too. He's been a European champion, 20 victories, three defeats, and maybe it's a Good fighters, you know. Anthony Yigit, he lost the unanimous decision to. Chris Van Heerden as well, and then lost the majority decision recently, but avenged that defeat. Again, he's never been stopped, and that's why this is an important fight for Cattrall. Yeah, nice uppercut there, though, from Jack Cattrall. People talk about easy fights, he doesn't. Wants a padded record, he doesn't want a tune up fight. It's, it's got to be tough work from now on in, isn't it? No, of course it does, yeah. He, he's, no, he's, he needs competitive. If you don't get into a struggle, he needs competitive fights to keep him sharp. Nice movement there in the corner to make Schwarzkopf miss with a right hook. Oh, that's right up good. And the straight left hand there from Castle. And as well behind the jab as we enter the final bit of round one. Got a bit wayward with that right hook. Just kind of like that body shot. Yeah, we got that like in. Blocks for me. Four out of cattle. At least he's, at least he's coming to the fight. At least he's coming to the win. He's trying to be aggressive. Oh, body shot there from Cattrall. And also these left hands are, are breaking the guard open. He's taking a flush at the minute. Oh, another one as well. Two right hooks to the body. 20, 25 seconds and Schwarzkopf noticeably slowing down into that exchange. Just think the footwork of Schwarzkopf is a little bit too predictable at the minute for Cattrall. So with the faster feet going, just, just to take a little half step back and make space for his long left hand. He's landed three huge right hands around the corner to the body of Schwarzkopf. In round one. Oh, the lovely shot there, just catching Schwarzkopf, trying to be aggressive, but dipping his legs, doing everything sort of right, and walking on that lovely uppercut there for Cattrall. And here's Cattrall here, landing on the jab, and then his punches go, staying nice and relaxed, not loading up. And boxing with the confidence he should have. Good, good first round, good, nice settling round there for, for, for Jack Cattrall. Well, just looking over to the corner there before we went to Schwarzkopf, 
they put some miles in, haven't they? Oh, Michael Travis. He's been everywhere. Yeah, and he's still got more places to go. Yes. He's got Cal Framden next week. Unbelievable. He just likes business class. So, <laughs> Lord, <laughs> there, man. He's a spoiled man, Michael Travis. Absolute spoiled man. No, you can call him many things. I'm not sure spoiled's one of them. He's a man of the community, that's yeah, for sure. Proper grafter. Not just at this level, too. There's a lot of grassroots stuff up in yeah, Manchester, just, bringing youngsters through. In Moss side. That's good for Swartz. Swartz, I thought they were just trying to smell the work of cattle, be aggressive, trying to stay on his chest. I think that's the idea. I just don't know if he has the, the, fast, the feet are fast enough to do that. Because he sort of drags that back leg, because he's a big step with the front foot. And he has a wide stance, which can leave you in trouble. And the balance is not always there. Swartz, Scott. Just needs to be a bit more controlled with that. Right hook, it's wild, and he throws it from a long way out. But you can see why he's doing it, because Castle's a soft body for the right hand, he'll lean naturally to the left as a defensive move. So you, you know, if you swing it, if you hook that right hook, get it right, then, and he leans into it, it's a very effective weapon. There he goes, good shot. Yeah, he throws it a little bit shorter, and that's a success. Bit of blood on the nose there, the catch on from that right hook. Yeah, Schwartz got. He fancies it, doesn't he? Make a mistake. That's what catch on needs to do. He's got the straight shots, just to nip away the confidence here of Schwartz. Yeah, he has been caught. You see him just touching his nose with that right glove as the blood comes through. That won't bother him too much, I wouldn't have thought. Body shot from Castle there. Nice little hook back there from Swarshoff. I'm not sure if your German's any better than mine. Oh, oh, body shot again from Castle. And the left hand finish as well. Yeah, not sure if your German's any better than mine, but a lot of encouraging noises coming from the short stop corner. I think they're happy with it, man, but he gets caught there on the top of the head by a catch on right hand and then the left after the body shot. Look at that little bit of spin on the front foot there from Cattle, and he's away in the centre of the ring. Just needs to maintain that quality here, on Cattle. Don't get too lazy. Oh, heads coming in close there, Swartzkopf coming worse off of it. Yeah, just call that one on the side of the jaw, Swartzkopf. Dealt with it well, though. He's coming out of a goal, he's going to credit for that. A good two rounds worthy of a headline fight. Catherall straight over to the corner, looking at Travis for instruction. It's a lovely combination there from Castle. The first left hand never quite connected fully. But the left, the, the right hook to the body, the left to the finish it off. It was a lovely little combination. And there's the family there, Castle there's pounded in the middle. A really interesting evening of boxing here. Return to Rumble 2 for Hard Al Blushi. But his professional corners 10 seconds. Good winning start with the first round win. Then we saw Thomas Patrick Ward beat Martin Casillas. As comprehensive a performance as I've seen from him in quite some time. Round 3. Mohamed Wazi got a good victory against Gallagher Lopez. And Vigenda Singh couldn't quite finish off Charles Adamu. But the rugged African was really holding on at the end. It comes down to this at Caesar's Palace. Caesar's Palace. Yeah. See you on the tables later, is it all right? I never thought I'd get the Caesar's Palace in my life. <laughs> oh, that body shot. Look for a second like it was going to fold Schwarzkopf. 
Really positive start to the round from Katarul and Schwarzkopf slowing right down. Oh, good, good right shot then from Schwarzkopf. Well, he responds well to the punishment. Katarul pounce on the joy that he's got to that body shot. Perhaps he's that is a way to grind this man down. See the acceleration of the pace in the work of Earl Cattle. It's something that even Schwartz of trying to be aggressive, trying to close the gap. That acceleration of the pace, he just can't deal with it at the minute. I'm still looking strong, man, Schwartz of, and not, not deterred at all. That's a great little punch there from Cattle. Schwartz ability to take one or two good shots from Castro, usually one up top, one downstairs, and then come forward. It's been exceptional for the club, he's opened in three rounds. When will he be able to continue in the latter stages? Because surely those body shots will take their toll at some point. Just land with a good right hand second, goes well, Schwarzkopf. You think, you think he, he struggled to keep that up, but the problem he got is his feet are not fast enough to close the gap quick enough, so for the most part, Castro can time some of these some of these attacks and that's why he's landed with the uppercuts and the hooks over the top. That's the best shot, the best chance for it. Where Cato dips to the left, he throws out that loop in right shot, right hand. You can't be used over players, so then it's easy to be readable. This is going to work again from Cato. Nice and close. Because he has sort, sort of like an earbuff defense here, Schwarzkopf, those elbows have to go high, which means that body, all that low part of that body is massively exposed. So we got a shoulder there from Castle after that uppercut. A lovely left hand through the guard. Another good round in the bank from both men. He's picking his, picking his spots, isn't he? Picking them really well, picking the punches as well. That body shot there, that looked for a second oh, like it was going to drop short, Scott. And that right hook there, as we were just talking over the top, as well as he moved back, he was just, just maybe just wobbling the legs a little. There he goes, a lovely shot, it really is. Was that an elbow? Have a look at this now. Oh, this, it, was the, it was the previous shot. Did he just catch him coming through the elbow? But he's picking his punches really up, picking up, and the fun, because Schwartz's feet, Schwarzkopf's feet are just a little bit too slow. And it's just a little bit easier for, for, for Castle to take a little half step back and then find the, see the gap and have a chance to look at the gap. Corners, 10 seconds. Round four. Oh, both men straight on it. Catterall lands with a couple, then Schwarzkopf comes back with a counter hook. Well, Catterall's got to keep putting the pace on a little bit, that's, I think that's the right thing. But he does need to get, get involved in a little bit of a tear up here, he's a guy who looks physically strong. Just keep picking him apart, breaking him down, I think that's the idea. You've got the hand speed, the foot speed, and the intelligence to. Maybe you have the better here, the draw stop, so don't keep him around with the lands. Just waiting. It's the feet as well, that's the reason why Cat's getting success. That right foot's on the outside almost every time. Yeah, draw stop. And you know why? That left foot on the outside. Yeah. Did it again. Did it again there. Just before that, Catrell looked as though he was waiting for the opportunity to counter, but shot there. And again, left to the head, right to the body. And he's pushing right through the tag with that left hand as well. Yeah. Oh, 
happy to sponsor them from Swan Shop. You need to do that. Well, they're both men happy to take one to give one, and that's uh, what's making this fascinating evening. This round four, approaching the final minute of it, ten scheduled in the headline bout of the evening here at Caesars Palace, Dubai. Again, Castro lands, but Shortstar comes back. He's been programmed, doesn't he, to throw yeah. as soon as he gets landed on. But the problem is he's taking too many covers he's coming in. He's having a success with some of those right hands. And some of them are good shots, but he's having too much, taking too much coming forward. It's good from Castro, let's see if this is he needs it, lads. Now Schwarzkopf looking to cut loose in the final few seconds of round number four. What a special treat for you all in the break of the round, Billy Joe Saunders. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, what are your thoughts on what you've seen this evening? Yeah, some good boxing, especially this one. Um, he's fought on a tough German, but I think uh, Jack Catterall now is just um, breaking him down slowly. And I think that's just going to take its toll in another round or two. Well, you've never been scared to sort of push the boundaries in terms of your career. Do you think we might see you out here in Dubai one day? 100%. I would love the Canelo fight out here. Neutral ground for everybody. Um, draw a big crowd and good for the country, I'm up for it. Well that's the name on everyone's lips with regards to what's next for you, Canelo. How close are we to that? Are we going to see it and when are we going to see it? I'll leave it to our management at MTK, you know, I'm in the best stands in the business, so who, when, whenever, I'm ready. Have you got a message for the man? Let's go. Thank you very much, enjoy the rest of your evening and we look forward to seeing that whenever it does happen. But now we'll get back to the action here. And when he gets back to his seat, Barry, Billy Joe against Canelo, that's something we'd all like to see. Yeah, of course it is. You know, if, if anything, that's the fight that makes you for the rest of your life. But also, but I don't, like, I, I, I hope it happens for Billy's sake. He won't know to be fair to me. He's wanted to prove himself for a long time. I don't know whether Canelo would want it. I, Canelo was in the favour, and he fancied him to win. But also, but who wants to fight Billy Joe's son? Who wants to fight the Alex Alcourt? Unless you're... Swarshoff. Yeah. <laughs> Massive shot there, Schwarzkopf climbs in. You can see a lot of work's gone into the eyes of Cashel there. Got some blood around underneath both eyes. A lot of Vaseline. We didn't see that work being done in the corner once we were chatting to Billy Joe Saunders. But Schwarzkopf is causing Jack Cashel some problems here. And again, around the corner, that right hand to the body. How Schwarzkopf keeps coming through those and backing Cashel up. Well, he's marked up now. Look at above the right eye. And that is a cut in a dangerous position as well. Just how it affects the vision and if it's going to be driven into the eye. Schwarzkopf landed a nice jab on that as well. And again, being very, very accurate indeed, the German. He senses an upset. Oh, lovely from Cashel. That's a jab to the body, left hand over the top. He's going to do so far, halfway to the round, going to speed up, maybe swash off. And in the clinch there, you saw Cashel just wipe away whatever residue it was on that right side, whether it's blood, whether it was Vaseline, whether it was sweat, something's bothering him. He makes Schwarzkopf yeah. miss. Great feet there from Jack Cashel. Nice work as well there with the left hand right hook. Exemplary with a minute to go in round five. He left from Cashel off the gloves, sparks Schwarzkopf into life once again. He's going to be back into the round here, Cashel. He's caught the way out, Schwarzkopf. Watch the left hand come to the body, clipped him in the right. Good from Schwarzkopf there, just blocking the combat with the same hand. 
Chile from Stuttgart. He's made that his home, spent the first few years of his life in Kosovo. And the call is his home nation. Won three bats and lost to outside of Germany. First time he's boxed in Dubai. Rose. First time many of these men are boxed in Dubai. A real growing venue. And I expect we're going to see plenty more quality fight nights here. The three rounds plus the remainder of this seven to come. I think both men still very interested in this. Short scuffle. Certainly have got a bit more encouragement than he thought he might have had at this point in the fight. He can go on the shot, although the shot has a problem for that short shot. But he's physically strong, nothing's really hurt him on Cattle. And he's got to have to push him back at all, but he's still picking him off for me. That right side, the cut doesn't seem to have got any worse, but it's just starting to close. Not dangerously, but noticeably less of a field of vision than he had earlier on in the fight. Yeah, he's back to his, he's got back to his rhythm again near Cattle. Using his fast feet, fast hands, not holding his feet too long. Halfway through round number seven then. Both fighters just taking a second to breathe. We've spoken about it a few times, but I think Schultz's possibility to take the body shot and still come forward has been very impressive. Take any shot still come forward, you're right, yeah. Physically strong, he's still taking too many shots coming forward. Yeah. Tavita, Tavita, really, uh, don't really have a say who wins or wrong, so constantly coming forward, putting pressure on Castle, making it uncomfortable at times, but not doing enough to, to pick up the points. Yeah, I mean, we're making a lot of presumptions here that it's going to go the distance, but it could be one of those ones that's quite a wide gap in terms of the scorecard, which is really a true reflection of what we. Um, See, it's the entertainment. It's, 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 not, it's not true to the competitiveness, but it's true to who's winning the round. Yes, sure, yeah. of course. That's right now, there to back up the left from Cashel. Boxing well here, Cashel. Yeah, the second round on the spin up to this point. Yeah. He's kept the boxing together quite well. He's kept the focus and the movement, that head movement. And is that a sign that Schwartz has just started to slow down? I think so. He might have literally just put it all into that. What was wrong was it? The fourth round? Certainly a fight that's been worthy of its top billing. And entering into these latter stages, this is going to be the real test now for Timo Schwarzkopf, isn't it? Lovely shot there from Cash over the top. Cash is not a KO artist, but he carries enough power to yeah. earn your respect. And the defense Schwarzkopf, he hasn't got bothered at all. Anything he's been caught with, he's just hit. Gets caught, he's going to have a step back and it just comes piling forward again. But he's walking on the shots and Cattle for the last couple of rounds has spun him a merry tune. Well, the supporters have been nearly oh, as much fun as us this evening. Although this might be slightly more lubricated than us. Round eight. Jack Cattrall responded very well to the cut and the onslaught in the middle rounds. Round eight of the ten schedule. Rotunda rumble two. When we talk about fights being a challenge, when you're at world level, every fight's a challenge. Yeah. Well, the, and this is not world level. No. Of course, I'm a good European level. Yeah. That's a good level, but. Um, of course it is. Championship fighters will give you a test. They should give you a test. The blowouts happen, but most most times they shouldn't give you a test. But again, it's been a, it's been a, 
With the right hand, just rocked the head, not something we've seen for a little while. I think he's boxed beautiful in, 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 big, in big patches here, Cantor. Oh, massive, massive body shot. And that dipped the knees of Schwarzkopf. And that one two again. The string one two right down the centre of the gas, and that right hook to the body have been the feature shots for Cantor tonight. And we wondered when they take their toll, and I think that might have been it. He bent his knees with one earlier in the fight, but that one just slowed him right down. Obviously something that Cattrall targeted, part of the game plan. He's worked a treat. The problem is for Swarovski, I thought he's just slowed down them so slightly with a little bit of fatigue. Not massive, just a little bit. The fact that he knows Cattrall's setting him up by just not not engaging first, so he knows he's going to throw a miss, he's just being a little bit more wary because he's a little bit slower. It's difficult to see when he tucks in that left elbow. Timo Schwarzkopf, but there's some bruising underneath the ribcage there, it's oh. casual again. Left, right, left, high, low, high. But again, that body, you know, I don't even see his I just think it just made him dip just a little bit. Again, that's the shot around the corner. And the crowd starting to sense it as well. 20 seconds of but round eight to go. But the, what's impressive there for Catchall is just the change in pace. He's, you know, he's tapping, tapping, all of a sudden he spurts out quality weighty shots. So look at that. No, he's, la he's landed three or four of it. And we hear the clap as Timo Schwarzkopf still coming forward, still throwing shots. I'm not sure if they're as venomous as they were early on. Great round there for Jack Cattrall. Well, there have been three in a row now where he has been comfortably better. And in, and in this time of the fight, when a guy starts producing maybe his best work, yeah. it's so demoralising, it really is. I think maybe that good three minutes from Timo Schwarzkopf in round five, that's the one, yeah. that's the one that nearly dipped Cattrall. Uh, sorry, nearly dipped Schwarzkopf, should I say. But all of a sudden, he lands with a shot and the acceleration of pace in his work it for me is so impressive. Yeah, since round five, where we sense that Schwarzkopf might be finding his way in, that's the round that you think that he might have nicked. Yeah, I think he did enough for it to be honest. I think he was the busier of the two. And I, and again, in a few of some of the other Corners, rounds, the earlier 10 round, seconds. He, you know, he's, he's tried to have a, have an, uh, no, be, in the, be in, the, in the equation for it, but I just don't think he's done enough. I know these last three rounds have been quite easy to score, they've been all, Round all Jack Cattrall. Busier and more quality in the work. Well, we're getting to the point now where Schwarzkopf's going to need a stoppage. And he lands with a nice right hand there. I think he's going to swing from the rafters. And maybe feel the opportunity slipping away. Rounds to go, not just to the bout, but off the evening. There's a nice right hand, just a second to go there from Swarzkopf. Swarzkopf has slowed down now. You sort of look at his feet. He's he was skipping forward before, he's plodding forward now. Yeah, well the problem is, he's didn't have the faster feet to start with. That would be one of the reasons I think he'd be a ten times better fighter if he had faster feet. But yeah, no, they, no, they've slowed down quite considerably. If Jack Cattle can keep the energy levels up, then he can skate down quite comfortably here. from Cattrall, Swarzkopf holding, but Cattrall willing to work away with the left hand. Oh, the right hand again. And it's the way he follows it up with the left, isn't it? I wonder, maybe just try, when he throws that right hook to the body, left hand, 
Maybe try to fight that right up the through the yeah. middle. That's lovely work. Clever. I think for Schwarzkopf, that he's really trying. But that right hook that was working for him in the early rounds is just not as successful now. Now having this, it's not the same, same urgency in his work. And so trying to plod forward, that's how strong and brave he is, but he's being picked apart here by the faster, cleaner work of Jack Cattrall. seconds of the penultimate round to go. Castrol's travelling fans really finding their voice as well. Been really impressed with the travelling support this evening actually, not just from Castrol's supporters but everyone who's made the journey. Oh, good shot there from Swarskov. That's a good shot too. He's a tough competitor and plants his feet and throws the right hook and Cattrall lands with the left himself and then makes him miss right on the belt. So this one is going to go to the 10th and final round. There's Cattrall's fans all stashed up. Again, it's, been, it's almost been the same combinations every time, haven't it? You know, the one-two, and then the one-two, right hook to the body, finish with that left hand. That's always good, because he, he dips down to the body catch, so make sure he finishes with a nice straight shot at the top. But you'd maybe like to see that final shot, a bit more variety in that. But I think when he throws right to the body, no, he's, he's, this is a good combination, it's worked for him, but just to change it up, when he throws that right to the body, because this guy slowed down a bit, then whipped that right up and cut right through the guard. Corners, 10 seconds. I wonder if we'll see it in the final round. 10 of 10, Jack Cattrall versus Timo Schwartzkopf here. Your and and final two. round. Great night of boxing here. It's been a pleasure to bring you five cracking bouts. None more entertaining than this one. Good start for the round here from Cattrall. Worked the body well then there. And again, as always, finishes at top. A bit low from Cattrall, but Schwarzkopf does what he's done all night and yeah. he's carried on throwing, even though yeah, the referee just met, just warned Cattrall there. A like low shot, two things to make Schwarzkopf a better fight they're faster feet if you could, if you could get it, and head movement. He has yeah. no head movement. Cattrall hasn't missed him all night every time he's thrown the shot. He's pretty much, especially the straight punches on right down the centre of the guard, he hasn't missed. And just as you said that, Cattrall put two more straight through the guard. But one thing Schwarzkopf has got, which is a gift for any fighter, is durability. Yeah, good chin durability, yeah. And that mental toughness to walk through it when you're getting banged every time, every time you make a move. Well, fighters have got to the very top level with that, haven't they? Yeah. Just being able to walk through hell. Shot. A good shot. I think that hurts Schwarzkopf. What does he do? Jump, tries to jump Strict. on Cattrall. Yeah, tries to jump on him. I think he's looked sharp in, in, in big parts of this fight with Jack Cattrall. Yeah. Switched off at times, of course, but I suppose when you're winning a fight, you know, that, that will happen. But I think he's been quite neat. Schwarzkopf landed in with that short hook, but Cattrall gets straight shot. back on it. Lance again. Timo Schwarzkopf's going to need some aspirin tomorrow, isn't he? <laughs> Goodness me. Oh, lovely work from Cattrall there. Just a little screw shot there with the left hand after a long right. Good head movement to... 
Law Schwarzkopf in, makes him miss once more. 20 seconds of this one to go. We're going to go to the judges' scorecard. I don't think we're going to get a surprise. Um, provided he gets the result, do you think this has been mission accomplished for catch one this yeah, evening? The, the cut's unfortunate, but you know, and it may, want, it may be a hard fight that they anticipated, who knows, but it's, it's a good 10 rounds and you know, good preparation for anything to are coming up. Oh, I looked right on the bell there like a body shot was going to finally hack away at Schwarzkopf and drop him to his knees, but he hears the final bell. Jack Catchwell raises that right hand. Comprehensive at times, aloof at others. I, I think you know, I thought it was a good performance. I think, you know, I think the, the fact that Schwarz, Schwarzkopf was so physically tough and so physically strong made it a more entertaining fight than, it, than maybe it should have been. Because Catchwell, to be fair, without changing his style totally, did everything he could to get the stoppage tonight. So he landed with all the clean shots, so up the pace when he had to, held his feet and dug on the canvas, some good body shots and good long left hands. Tried to get him out there, he couldn't. But he kept trying, and even in the last round there, last two rounds, when he could have really just skated around and won easily, tried to hold his feet. Schwarzkopf deserves credit for the durability, the toughness, and the willingness to try and win. But Catchwell was a few leagues above, and I think it showed. Yuji Fukuji calls both men into the middle and for the final time this evening we go to Ricky Wright with the results. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing we go to the scorecards. Shezad Janab scores about 99 to 91. Gary Kitanowski scores about 100 to 91. And Dean Henry scores the bout 99 to 92. All three in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Hell Gatto, Jack Catterall. Well, you were correct, Barry. He did take that one round, but a pretty comprehensive points victory for Jack Catterall. And we saw some really positive stuff.